uh, in this class when we're doing labs, we're going to be making observations. We already made some observations whenever we were looking at the diatoms in the lab that we did on the first day of class. So let's think of some of the observations that you wrote down. You were supposed to make observations before I put the diatoms in the water and then afterwards as soon as they hit the water. So some observations that I heard. Things like the diatoms are white. I heard the diatoms are crystal-like. Afterwards, some observations that I heard was they died when we inserted a pen into the water. Another observation is ten were spinning. Many of you noted that that they would be spinning in circles. And then many of you had they started moving. When we're recording observations, we want to make sure that they are in fact observations that we're recording and not inferences. So let's talk about the difference between the two because we do not want to include inferences when we're just analyzing an experiment and getting observations. Observations are what you actually see is happening. If you're writing down inferences, then you're writing down what you think is happening, but it's not exactly that you're seeing. So inferences are what you think is happening. Let's go back to our observations here, and let's identify which ones are observations and which ones are inferences. So for this first observation, the diatoms are white. That is something that we can truly see. So that is a good observation. They are crystal-like. Well, since you said they are crystal-like, that's an observation. If you just said they're crystals, you don't know that for sure. That would be an inference. So let's indicate number two as an observation. They died when we inserted a pen. Well, you are assuming that they are actually alive. And so you don't know that for sure. You can't really see, just with the naked eye, that they are alive and that they died. So this would be an example of an inference. So I'm going to cross a line through that and indicate that was an inference. Four says 10 were spinning. That is something that you actually can see. That is an observation. You can see them spinning around in a circle. They started moving. That would be an example of an observation as well. Next, I want to talk about the difference between quantitative observations and those that are considered qualitative. When we're talking about quantitative data, I want you to think of the word quantity. We're talking about something related to numbers. So if we have an observation that's related to numbers, then you've got quantitative data. So quantitative data is data reported as numbers. Some examples of quantitative data. We can take the pH of something. pH equals 3. Since we're dealing with a number, that's quantitative data. We recorded that there was 10 spinning. That would be quantitative data. If we were measuring something like mass and we have 7.2 grams, that would be an example of quantitative data. Qualitative data is data that's reported as some kind of description. So as a description. So by saying that they appeared white, we're indicating a color. That would be a, an example of qualitative data. When we said that they stopped moving, that's qualitative data. Some of you mentioned that they had an interesting smell, something that you recognized. Again, qualitative data. Now, in the lab that you completed on that first day, there was a question, and after you did the diatoms, it says, indicate the equipment that you would need in order to do this demonstration. So let's talk about what we mean by equipment, because sometimes you're asked to specify equipment, and sometimes you're asked to specify materials. So there's a difference between the two. If something is considered equipment, I want you to think of things that would be metal, glass, plastic, or wood. And what you're thinking of is probably equipment. 
Another good criteria to use when trying to determine if something is equipment is think about, is this normally stored in a cabinet for a long period of time? Can we get it out? Can we use it? So can we reuse it over and over and over again with no change to it? Then it's going to be considered equipment. Let's analyze some of these examples here to determine whether they would be considered equipment. A scale. I store a scale in my cabinet. I get it out, I use it, I can put it back, I can get it out, and I can reuse it. So it would be considered equipment. So let's put a check mark there for equipment. A pipette, and you all worked on mastering the pipette in this lab, and it's not as easy as it looks. A pipette's made of plastic, I store it in my cabinets, I reuse them over and over again. So they're considered equipment. Same with the thermometer, reuse it over and over. Same with the timer. A plant. Well, if you think about a plant, I do not store plants in my cabinets, get them out, put them back. So a plant would actually be considered more of a material. So I'm going to cross through that. A beaker, yes. Glass, we use them over and over again. Same with the ruler. Soil, not something that we have a tendency to reuse over and over again. Because whenever we use it, then we're probably going to alter the composition and the quality of the soil. So it would be more of a material, not necessarily equipment. Water. We do not reuse water over and over and over again. I do not normally store water in my cabinetry, so it would be considered materials. Pill bugs. Pill bugs are really pulley, so we're going to be doing an experiment in a couple days with pill bugs. We do not store pill bugs in our cabinets. We do not get them out year, from, year after year and reuse them, so they would be considered materials and not necessarily equipment. Now, if you're asked to indicate materials, basically anything goes. You can list things that we cross through here, like the plant, water, pill bugs, soil. And we like to sometimes term those as consumables, things that we're going to use, but we're not going to be able to reuse them over and over and over again. We're going to have to get a new supply of them over and over and over again. Um, or you can indicate anything that is equipment, and when you would get your point for correctly listing materials, as long as they were materials that you did actually have to use to do an experiment and answer a question.